Hello everyone, Silent K here, and welcome to the final part of the VR Tour 4, A Place Further Than the Universe. I was ready to record this like two weeks ago, but I had some in real life stuff happen, so I had to postpone it. But we're finally ready to go to that Fables Faraway place. This video is probably going to be on the long side, because I want to do the entire trip in one go. There's a lot of cool stuff, so I hope you can bear with me. I'll probably put chapters in to make it easier to jump back in if you have to watch it in multiple sessions. But here we are in the Tokyo airport. The girls have to meet the icebreaker in Fremantle, Australia. So they have to fly there and their first stop is a layover in Singapore, which is way over here. And this is the first time the VR tour actually leaves Japan. So this is quite cool. And here we are, the Jewel Changi Airport, quite a bustling place. This entire section is the airport. We have the main building here, we can see the tower in one shot. And I wanted to get the establishing shot, but I couldn't find a good angle. We can at least see the tower from here though. All right, so we can see this tower in the wide shot, so we know we're in the right airport. Very lovely. And then right over here, we can see the entrance to the main building. All right, and that's pretty much perfect. We got the Terminal 3 entrance here. We can see the sign for Terminal 2 and the carts in the background. And then we have some shots inside the main building, which I can hopefully find because there's like a thousand 360 photos in here. Alright, so we can see a few things from here. We got the ticket counters here with the screens above. And in the background of that shot, we can also see this oval with the man and the woman in it. And there's another shot with flight information, which is these screens right here, we can see the back of. I couldn't find a shot from the other side, but in the background of that shot, we can also see this yellow funnel shaped building with the grid pattern. This is the Paradise Dynasty restaurant. And we can also see these white cubes with black circles on them, which I assume are security camera banks. Lovely. All right, and aside from a couple of very unimportant shots, that's basically all they show of the airport, which is pretty much a crime, because there is so much interesting stuff going on in this airport. I could do an entire video just on it, but obviously we don't have that kind of time, so I'm going to show you the coolest thing, which is right over here. We can see this glass dome, and you just have to see it for yourself. Check this out. Look at this. Now just to be clear, this is inside the airport. This is not like adjacent to the airport. Amazing. And here we have a little placard which describes the rain vortex, but I can't really read it in VR. So I'll put a little note on the screen. Absolutely beautiful. And there are tons of other cool things in this airport. There's a butterfly habitat. 
There's a sunflower garden. There's one place where it looks like the forest is just growing through the wall for no reason at all. And they don't show it in the anime, but the ticket counter room has all these weird panels hanging at crazy angles for no reason. That just looks really cool. Alright, now that we spent far too long on just the airport, we're off to the Ion Orchard Mall. There are a lot of shots in Singapore, but they're mostly located in just a couple spots, so it should go quickly. And this place has some pretty good 3D. We can see the mall here with the metal trees supporting the awning. And we got this pagoda top building here. And the cone building here. The M&S building here. And in street view. We have the mall here, and the pagoda building, and the cone building, and the other cone building, MNS in reality, I think the anime called it NNS. And we can see this little bubble dome here where the girls exit the mall. And right down the road is the Orchard Hotel, where they're staying at. We can see it right here. And from Street View. There we go. And we can see the sign near the entrance, which is under here. The Orchard Hotel Singapore. Alright, and next we have the Merlion statue, which is pretty easy to find. It's right near the Marina Bay Sands building here. And it's right down here. Yeah. I wonder if that's disappointing enough to please Kimari. <laughs> and they take the ferry there. So, the first shot is right near this river cruise building, right around the corner. Alright, so we can see this river cruise building here in the shot, and the Merlion statue in front. And then we have some shots from this pier here. There are like a million 360 photos here, so I didn't actually pick one yet. I'll just show you whatever decent one I find now. Alright, that one has a really good res. We got the Merlion statue in front. A lot of these skyscrapers in the background. We got triplets right here. What's with this lady? <laughs> you can also see a lot of other shots here. We got the Esplande building to the north. We got this Ferris wheel to the northeast. And of course the Marina Bay Sands building to the east. And the Marina Bay Sands building is also where the Spectra Light Show is, right here. And there's a lot of 360 photos here. I did try to look around and pick one that was at night during a show, but I couldn't find one. I could only find one that was at night. Alright. So that's the best I could do. I couldn't find one with the actual show in action, which is disappointing. but still very lovely. All right, so I poked around a little more and found one that's actually during the show. Not exactly the best resolution, but still very lovely. Awesome. They also have a wide shot of this bay, and I did manage to find a drone shot. It wouldn't be a VR tour without a drone shot. Alright, so we can see this pentagon shaped area here. And the light show in the bottom left of the screenshot. And a lot of this cityscape here. 
And of course, the Merlion statue is down here. Beautiful. Alright, and the last shot for this area is the Gardens by the Bay from the top of the Marina Bay Sands building. And it looks pretty nice even in 3D. But we do have a ton of 360 photos up here. Alright. Not the best resolution ever, but a very beautiful view. Many, many ships out on the water. Gorgeous. Alright, and the last location for Singapore is the Maxwell Food Center. Now you can walk around this entire place with 360 photos. I couldn't find a shot that looked exactly the same as the one from the show, but I did find a couple of the stalls. So either the show moved things around or the center has moved things around since then. Alright, so... We have these two stalls in the screenshot. On the left side, there's this one with the blue background, yellow lettering, and the number 35 in a circle. And then in the screenshot on the opposite side, you have this one with the yellow background, Maxwell written on it, and a graphic on either side. So in this photo, they're right next to each other, and in the screenshot, they're on opposite sides. All right, and with that, we are done with Singapore, and we're off to Fremantle, Australia. And I'll try not to call it Fremont, Australia, because I did that many, many times <laughs> while I was researching. Fremantle. And here we have the harbor. The Penguin Manjago is parked up here where this battleship is, but first, you may recognize this guy. It's the lighthouse from the opening. They have revamped this thing since the show, but we do have pictures of the old version and the new version. There we go. Alright, and here's the version from the opening. We have the dark green paint, there's a solar panel to the right, and you can't see it in the screenshot, but this blue sign with the very specific icons on it. And then over here we have Street View with the updated version. Much lighter green paint, they put a little fence around it, they took down the solar panel, and this blue sign is completely different. And then we have the Penguin Manju Go right over here. No 360 photos like further up where the screenshot is, but there were a couple like down here. So we can see the white and yellow building here and the fence in between the two buildings. And obviously the Penguin Manju Go would be here. And we can get a little closer in 3D. We got the white and yellow, the fence here, battleship representing the Penguin Manjugo. And there's another shot from the street over here, looking through the fence. Alright, Penguin Manjugo missing, but we have all these signs here and whatnot. Alright, and then one night the girls decide to sneak around looking for information. And they end up here at Porto Rosa, which in the show was called Pierosa or Pierota or something like that. But we have this pole here in front of these banners, and the shot is right here. Alright, so we got the storefronts here. We got this wall with the wave in it, and this pole right in the center. Howdy, folks. How's the food? 
tasty. Good to hear. <laughs> and then the last thing they do before they leave is head to the Fremantle Market where they do some shopping. And we have an exterior shot here. All right, and we have the main entrance over here. We can see this little shop here, Wild Earth Images. And we have a close-up of the sign here. And we do see the interior in the show. This place has like all kinds of stuff, anything you can imagine. But we only really see the produce area, which is right over here. All right, and we have our lovely produce here. And the whole place is 360 photoed. You could walk around the entire place if you want. But that's the only thing we actually see in the show. All right, and with that, we are finished with Australia. From here, the girls board the Penguin Manju Go and sail all the way to Antarctica. And I definitely wanted to include this in the VR tour because it's a big part of the show. It takes up like a third of the episodes. Obviously, we can't look at an icebreaker in Google Earth VR. So my first thought was hopefully someone had taken a Shirase icebreaker and put it in VR for some reason. Either as a standalone app or maybe a VR chat world or something like that. I looked all over the place, couldn't find one. So, the next step was to take matters into my own hands. Hello everyone and welcome to A Place Further Than The Universe VR, made by Silent K. This is a project I whipped up in Unity just so we could look at the icebreaker in VR. Welcome to the title cube, very fancy. I have uh, some instructions here, some information and credits here. I did make pretty much everything, except I obviously wasn't going to model a full Shirase icebreaker from scratch. That would have taken forever. So we have Ario H to thank for that. I did have to do a lot of modifications, but it's still not quite to scale and it's still not quite accurate to the actual Shirase, but it's close enough for our needs. So let's get started. Just walk through the wall here and there you have it. The Penguin Mod you go. Modeled after the second Shirase icebreaker. And we have the ice sheet here and Antarctica, which I did not model accurately, even slightly. I just threw some random hills in there. Don't think too much about it. It doesn't really matter. <laughs> So we got the icebreaker breaking through the ice sheet here. I have these little spheres marking where screenshot locations are. So here we have the girls from the opening. And if we swing around here, the camera pans around and we can see them from behind. And then we can head down this way. We got the lifeboats here, little stairwell. And over here, we have the girls running to the front of the ship when icebergs were spotted for the first time. And then back here, we have the girls going in front of the containers when the ship was still docked in Fremantle. And then if we come out here for a wide shot, we can see the we can see the lifeboats and the dinghy and the containers. The back end is completely wrong for both Shirase models. Like none of them have the butt end sticking that far out. And the Shirase 2 actually has like a bunch of windows that go further up. So this part looks more like a Shirase 1 rather than a Shirase 2 but the rest of it is like completely Shirase 2. So I don't know what the modeler was doing, but they didn't actually list it as a Shirase icebreaker. They just listed it as icebreaker model A. So I don't know why it's inaccurate in so many parts, but very accurate in others, but no matter. Over here, we have the girls up against the railing during the storm, a very important scene. They spent the entire day being seasick 
And then this is where they like reaffirm their resolve to go to Antarctica. There's also a shot like from this angle where you can see the door in the corner and it goes further down the lower decks. Back here I have the challenge for Antarctica flag flying high. And then over here we have the helipad. A lot of shots take place on the helipad. And obviously we have the helicopter used to move supplies and people around. During transport it's in the hangar with the blades taken off. And they also use this for storage and whatnot. And we can go inside the helicopter. It's got all the details. And we got this shot. And up here we have Kanai taking a photo shortly after they launched. Down here we have the girls when they were introduced to running around the ship for exercise. And then up here we have the girls eavesdropping on Shirase and Gin talking about Shirase's mom. And up here Shirase and Gin themselves. And all the way at the top we have the gang talking to what's his face? I don't remember his name <laughs> about Gin's love life. Up here we can also see the instrument tower. Not very detailed in this model, but there you go. <laughs> And there are a bunch of shots overlooking the bow from up here. Gorgeous. And then of course we have one more shot. All the way down here. with the landing stairs extended. Over here we have the girls taking their first step onto Antarctica, or rather the ice sheet around Antarctica, but close enough. <laughs> All right, and that was a look at the Penguin Manju Go in VR. I forgot to mention that this model does not have an interior but it doesn't really matter because the show made a point of saying that the Penguin Manju Go had a different interior than the Shirase 2. But even just that much is pretty awesome, I think. Alright, back to Google Earth VR. Here we are back in Australia, just to show the trip from Fremantle. We are going all the way southwest to the bottom of the world here at Showa Station. Which if you look at Australia from this way, you have this that looks like the brim of a hat and this is the top of the hat. So Showa Station is like two thirds across the top of the hat. Surprisingly, there are quite a few 360 photos here. Temper your expectations though, the resolution isn't great. And also the places they visit outside of Showa Station, no 360 photos of those. But hey, it's a lot more than I expected to find here. So the first thing we have is obviously the sign. Right here you can see the tanks and snowcats are parked 
and the entrance to the main building is like right over here all right so this is actually one of the better resolution shots so here we have the Showa station sign and the main building with the dome on top we can see this yellow building and the little red one We have this signpost here with the many signs on it. There's a closer shot of that one we'll look at. This red building is not the dormitory. We'll check that one out later. Over here are the tanks and the snowcats I mentioned. Absolutely beautiful. And here we have a close up of those signs. And we can see some silver and blue buildings right around here. We got these two silver buildings here, and then the two blue buildings next to it. And the dormitory building is way to the south. We can see it here. And there's a 360 photo around here. All right, so we got the red building with two sections, little stairs up front. And this platform with maybe solar panels on it, something like that. All right, and then back up towards the north, it was a little tricky to find, but we do have the water treatment pool. All right, so we got the pool here, the treatment machinery here, blue, yellow, and red buildings in the background. Not exactly a lot of snow to fill it with. Kimari and the gang are going to have to wander quite a bit. <laughs> and next we have some spiral stairs behind one building where Hinata goes to kick some snow. All right, so we got the spiral staircase here attached to the silver building. Yellow hallway in the background. Not exactly much snow for Hinata to kick though. And then right over here, we should have the weather balloon building. Oh, nice. This isn't even the shot that I was looking at when I was doing my research. This one actually has a weather balloon in it. <laughs> And over here, we should have a shot of the tanks and snowcats I've mentioned already. All right, here we have the tanks. It's not from the snowcat side, but we can see some through here. There's also a shot where we can see the buildings in the background. All right, and there's one shot of a penguin sign, which I did find right along this road here. Should be right around here. There we go. <laughs> Beware of the animals. Wonderful. And lastly, there is a very high and wide shot of the entire station. Couldn't find a drone shot, but I did find one that's a little bit high up that lets you see everything. All right, so the angle is like 90 degrees off from the screenshot. You can see this black sphere over here. The screenshot is taken from like a little bit further away than that, looking this way. So from the left, you can see this like rounded building. And in the middle, you can see these buildings, the main building with the yellow connecting hall, the red and blue buildings. The red building to the far right is actually in front of the main building for us, so we can't see it. But all the important stuff is there. All right, well that concludes the VR tour for a place further than the universe. 
A fantastic series. I thoroughly enjoyed making this. I'm glad I was able to include the icebreaker and show a station parts. Otherwise, I wouldn't have even bothered. It was a lot of work, though. I hope it's appreciated. <laughs> I'll try to make the VR project available for download at some point in the future. I'll include a making of video for that if I do. But that's all. Hope you all enjoyed it. Thank you for watching. Please tune in again next time.